Storytelling has always been influenced by historical context. This is something that we here at Top 10 Nerd are no stranger to. One of the most exciting things about comics is how they've changed and adapted over the years based on the world of the creators crafting them. It's pretty neat. So today we're returning to a list that discusses exactly that. The Top 10 Superheroes Who Fought in World War 2 Part 2 The superhero way back then was generally to fight against the evil Axis powers, whether that was punching Nazis or just beating the crap out of the number one Nazi, Hitler, or some really racially insensitive portrayals that are hella awkward now. But yay for punching Nazis! Some Something we can all get behind. For the most part, this time around, we'll be focusing on a few smaller wartime efforts, yet inspiring nonetheless. So, with that in mind, let's jump in. And at number 10, Robin. The Cape Crusader himself made quite the appearance on our last list, so it's only fair that we discuss his partner in justice, Robin the Boy Wonder. The OG sidekick character would mainly be featured in the war effort comics that his mentor Batman was in, including those issues of World's Finest that starred the duo alongside the Man of Steel. The stories would vary quite a bit. While the US wouldn't join the war until two years after, when Pearl Harbor was attacked, both DC and Marvel had been rallying support for the Allies in the panels on their pages. Even after the US did join the war, a lot of the comics for the most part were Retained a lighthearted nature, with the likes of stories including the dynamic duo teaming up with the Boy Commandos, who were a special unit of Allied forces that were made up of feisty street kids. There was also stories where the two sold war bonds, and even a story in which they traveled to Gotham University to ask the world's greatest historian what the aftermath of the war would be like. Although, in the latter story, the scenario in which the Nazis won left Batman and Robin executed by a firing squad. Yeah, yikes. And at number 9, America Chavez. America is a bit of an exception on this list. A modern day and awesome character. America is currently Miss America, who debuted back in 2011 prior to getting her own solo series in 2017, which unfortunately already ended this year. During one of her stories, she used a machine called the Wayback to travel back in time, which uncontrollably dropped her off in World War II, in Germany, and in that famous moment during Captain America comics number one, right before Cap punches Hitler. So of course, America steps in and beats him to the chase, because who wouldn't? Punching Hitler herself. And at number 8, Midnighter. So this one is cheating ever so slightly. Rather than World War II, it's World War One. Midnighter initially created by Wildstorm was later bought out by DC, and has often been described as Batman without the ethical code. And, and bad ears. Can't forget those bad ears. Oh, and he also has a gay romance with Apollo, who is the Superman equivalent. He even got married, you guys. Anyway, Midnighter may be a tad violent, but he still has the right mindset when it comes to Nazis, and punching them. For context, after Midnighter and Co. became DC properties, Midnighter found himself the pawn of a man who had swapped Midnighter's second heart for a remote-controlled bomb. <laughs> that sounds like a comic story. This man, Paulus, threatened to detonate the bomb unless Midnighter went back in time and killed Hitler. So Midnighter goes back in time during World War I to kill Hitler when he's a soldier in the German army. He gets close, but manages to only kick him in the balls before the rest of the story unravels into something more. And at 7, Catman. While DC Comics has their own Catman character, this one first appeared in September of 1940, and belonged to Tem Publishing Co., one of the publishing companies owned by Frank Z. Temerson. One of the comics published by them was Crash Comics, the title Catman would appear in. Catman was raised in Burma by a tiger, and gained his super ability because he lived with tigers for so long. Double yup. While the Golden Age hero wasn't as prominently fighting off Axis members as some of his peers from other publishers, he and his female sidekick, Kitten, of course, had a few stints where they took on the German forces. And at number 6, Green Hornet. Green Hornet originated as a character from the days of radio in 1936 before he started appearing in comics in the 40s. One issue in particular, Green Hornet number 15, featured the expert detective sneaking onto a ship with his sidekick Kato, all to investigate why American ships had been disappeared. Eventually, the ship they're on discovers a ghost ship, which turns out is filled with Nazis who have been pulling this stunt in order to sink American supply ships. So, of course, Green Hornet and Kato sneak onto the Nazi ship and defuse the issue, saving the Americans in danger. And at number five, Hellboy. While Hellboy only first hit the comic scene in 1993, his backstory takes place during World War II. When, as a baby, he's summoned to Earth in the final months of World War II by the mad monk Rasputin, who was loosely based on the Russian mystic of the same name. Rasputin was working for the Nazis, and this ritual was part of a project aimed at turning the tide of the war for them. Hellboy is then taken by US forces to New Mexico, where he's raised by Professor Trevor Broom at the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense. After his first mission in 1952, he's granted an honorary human status by the UN, and he becomes a member of the Bureau, eventually becoming known as the world's greatest paranormal investigator. Needless to say, 
fighting Nazis has always been a priority and plot point of Hellboy's, even if his first encounter with them was only when he was still a child. In at number 4, Bullet Man Back in 1941, Shazam was running around punching Nazis and fighting for freedom, but sometimes he would have the help of other Fawcett Comics heroes, including the likes of Bullet Man. If you've watched some of our other videos, you may recognize Bullet Man as a character who, due to his silly origin, fell into the ridiculous superhero category over the course of the last few decades. And rightfully so. He and his gal pal Susan Kent zipped around wearing a gravity regulator helmet that was shaped like a bullet, which allowed them to fly and of course deflect bullets. Which objectively speaking isn't all too shabby of a superhero power if you like think about it in the context of the real world. Still, helmet looked dumb. Back to the Nazis though. In the first appearance of Captain Nazi, which was Hitler's answer to American superheroes, Bullet Man and Shazam take on the Aryan officer in green, and give him a solid ass whooping when the captain tries to stir up trouble on American soil. In our number 3 spot, Namor. Namor is generally seen as comics first anti-hero. The mutant son of a human sea captain in the Princess of Atlantis, in the timely eventually Marvel Universe that is, Namor initially acted as the enemy of the United States, who was a villain, despite usually having some sort of noble reason as to why he was creating chaos in the first place. He was known for completely destroying things, from ships to skyscrapers, and faced off against the first human torch, back when the character was an android. This all changed when the US joined the war, and Namor began to aid the allies in his comic appearances. Narratively, this was triggered by Namor traveling to New York to investigate divers that were spotted near Atlantis, and eventually it was revealed that those divers were actually Nazis. So he teamed up with his rival Human Torch, Captain America, and the All Winners Squad, all to fight against Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. And at number 2, Blue Beetle. Dan Garrett, aka the Blue Beetle, was the first hero to operate under that mantle. A golden age hero, he was published by Fox Comics, and started out as a detective who eventually progressed into being a superhero. During World War II, he took on a new role, a government agent who helped the US armed forces. One instance in particular was quite memorable. From Blue Beetle issues 31 and 32, the character is framed by some Nazis for their crimes. But Blue Beetle hunts them down. He chases them onto their U-boat, catches a hold of all of their torpedoes that they've been firing at him, and then flings them back at them, sinking their U-boat. Totally plausible thing. Garrett would eventually return to his roots as a neighborhood cop after the war ended, but despite this, his short run had gotten him quite a bit of popularity, and had resulted in not only his own solo comic strip, but also his own radio show that had a total of 48 13 minute episodes, which was kind of a big deal back then. And finally, in our number one spot, Bucky Barnes. Ah, it's another sidekick to finish off this list. Full circle. But compared to the boy wonder, Bucky's origins and character are much more rooted in the Second World War. There's a reason why he's always been a soldier. For starters, his first appearance happened in the thick of World War II. He made his debut in Captain America Comics issue number one in 1941. He was an army brat, meaning a child whose youth is completely immersed in military life. Being an orphan, Bucky lived at the US Army camp in Virginia that his father was killed at during his training, and stuck around, becoming a bit of an unofficial mascot to the soldiers there. He idolized Captain America, and eventually discovered that Steve Rogers, a soldier at the base, was Cap's in secret. After meeting the Star Spangled Hero, Bucky became part of the all kid team The Young Allies, initially known as the Sentinels of Liberty. They would participate in various skirmishes during the war, with their first being a face off against Red Skull. Later stories would have them beating up the likes of Axis leaders Mussolini, Tojo, and Hitler. And as most of you probably already know, Bucky was killed during the closing days of World War II in 1945, when he tried to defuse a bomb on a plane, causing it to explode midair before it reached its target. The character would later be revived, but that's for a whole other video. And that's that. Which of these heroes do you guys want to know more about? Let us know in those comments below. As always, if you dug this list, please show some love by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. And don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel, like the ones flashing in the playlist on your screen right now. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I've been Kelly Pally, and this has been Top 10 Nerd. Catch you all in the next one.